Here I'm going to very briefly introduce some of the fundamentals of the economics and the financial aspects of a power generation project. So introducing the main variables that decide the economics of a power project and also tying them back to some of the concepts that we've talked about earlier. Obviously for any project we want to generate some revenues and in terms of a power generation project that's largely going to be based on how much energy we sell and the price that we sell that energy for. But then we also have to spend some money to do that. We have some installed costs to build the power plant in the first place. So that would include equipment and hardware, the power plant itself, but also a load of construction costs, legal costs and other development related costs. Basically everything you spent to get this power plant sitting there on the ground. And then once it's built we also have some costs that are ongoing that occur as we operate the plant. So you'll hear the term O&M, operations and maintenance, the everyday costs of running the plant and repairs and so on. Then depending on the type of project we might have to buy fuel for the plant. Depending how it's financed, we may have to pay the bank back if we borrowed money as debt. We'll almost certainly have to pay the taxman some money on our profits. Possibly carbon costs if we're talking about a power source that emits CO2. And if the policy in the region applies costs to that. If we finance by selling equity, then those equity investors will expect returns in the form of dividends potentially. And there could be a whole bunch of other costs in there. When we talked about energy density, we talked about land requirements. Depending if you buy the land, that may be an upfront cost. If you're leasing the land, it may be an ongoing cost. If we look first at the revenue side, the amount of energy that we're going to generate depends on the fuel resource we've got and how efficiently we convert it. And we saw that if we think about the maximum fuel resource and how efficiently we convert it, that effectively gives us the maximum capacity of our power plant, how much we could generate if it's operating at full capacity. But then we introduce the idea of capacity factor, which tells us our actual output, which is less than obviously the maximum theoretically we could generate because our power plant is either not operating for the full time period or it's operating at lower than its maximum capacity. And we also introduce this term peak load hours, which captures the same kind of thing. It's also worth reminding ourselves at this point how characteristics like efficiency and energy density also impact the cost side of this picture. For example, if we're converting our fuel at lower efficiency, then to generate a certain amount of energy, we'll need more fuel. It affects our fuel costs. Potentially it affects things like transport costs and storage costs as well, if that's something that we have to pay for. Also, if our fuel is less energy dense, then we'll need more weight or volume of it in order to generate the same electricity output for a given conversion efficiency. And if we were talking about a solar farm, if we use lower efficiency panels, we'll need to collect more solar energy in order to generate the same electricity output. So we'll need more equipment. Or if the area energy power density of our solar resource is less, i.e. we're in a less sunny location, even with high efficiency panels we'll still need to collect over a wider area in order to generate the same amount of electricity output. If we have both low efficiency and a poor solar resource, again we need even more equipment. We need a bigger solar farm. And depending on the relative costs of high efficiency versus low efficiency panels, that might mean needing more equipment may mean more capital costs. But even if the panels themselves weren't any more expensive in total, there's more to install, so some of our installation costs would go up. There's more land cost, there's more to clean, so there's bigger maintenance costs, and so on. In other words, there are various costs that go along with having a larger plant footprint or with having a less energy dense resource, be that a natural resource or a fuel resource. And then the price we can sell it for could potentially be a fixed price. We could have signed a power purchase agreement with a purchaser of power and we might have agreed to do that at a known price. 
or we may be operating in a country or a region which has a feed-in tariff, which again gives us some kind of fixed known price. That's obviously useful because if we can calculate how much energy we're going to generate and we know the price, then we know our revenues. On the other hand, we may be operating in some kind of market environment where the price varies and the price will vary according to the balance between supply and demand in that market. The price will tend to be higher at periods of high demand, in particular at peak times. So in that sense, if we have a generating source which we can choose to dispatch at peak times, then that means we can expect a high price for our energy and hence more revenues. If we have a power generating source which we can only dispatch at periods of low demand, or if it's a natural resource because of natural resource patterns, is only going to dispatch at non-peak times, then our price will be lower. And so for the same amount of energy, our revenue will be lower. And in some cases, we may just not know. So if we're building a power plant, which by its nature is variable supply, and especially if it's something like a wind farm where that variable supply is based on the weather, in a situation where the price is set by the market, because we don't necessarily have a good long-term prediction of when and when not we're going to be able to produce power, we also don't have a very good long-term view over what price we might get. So variable pricing introduces a risk to our revenue. And so that's why things like feed-in tariffs have been so successful. They provide a fixed price, even if we have a variable resource, which also gives us then a known revenue or a more predictable revenue. It's possible there may be some other revenue sources. In particular, we've talked about carbon costs on the right-hand side. If I'm a clean, low emissions or no emissions power generating source, I might be able to generate revenue by selling carbon credits on a carbon market, for example. There are also power plants that can get paid not just for the energy that they produce, but also based on guaranteeing a particular rate of energy, a particular power output at a particular time. And that's what's called a capacity payment. If we're talking about all these various economic variables in the context of running a successful power project, we obviously need over time that our revenues add up to more than our costs. Now, different aspects of what's shown here occur at different times. Obviously, our installed costs the money we spend to build the power plant in the first place, they occur now, whereas our ongoing costs and our revenues are in future. And in particular, they're going to carry on accruing over the lifetime of the project, the project duration. In a separate video, I'll be briefly introducing the concept of levelized cost, which kind of tries to capture that balance between current costs and future costs in a way that describes the overall cost of producing energy. But for now, just visually, we can think about our revenues over time and our costs over time. So we spend some money up front. We have some fuel costs for the duration of the project. Here I've shown them being the same. Obviously, one of our cost risks is whether the fuel price goes up or, if we're lucky, the fuel price goes down. We'll have some operations and maintenance costs over time. I've suggested here that, in general, they will get larger over time. The older a power plant gets, the more you're likely to have to do to operate and maintain it. There will be more bits that will go wrong. You'll need to replace more parts and so on. And then you'll have debt repayments, for example, which may only accrue for a shorter period of time, not necessarily the full project duration. It depends on the deal you can do with the bank. And we could add other costs onto that as well. And then obviously above the line, we've got some revenue. Again, just for kind of illustrative purposes, I've suggested there's a slight downward slope on that line too, on the basis that over time, you will tend to see the energy output of a power plant reduce. Again, that's partly tied in with the operations and maintenance side. If you have more downtime, you have more lost generating hours, so you have less energy but also the efficiency of equipment can reduce over time, be that mechanical spinning turbines or be it things like solar panels, the output from 
solar panels actually does drop slightly with time. Wind turbine blades can become degraded and slightly less aerodynamic, again reducing slightly the energy output over time. On the other hand, if our price goes up over time, our revenue might get bigger. So there's a whole bunch of different possibilities for how that could look. And obviously, for more balance, we want over time that green area of our revenues to be bigger than our red area of spending so that we've made money. So that was just a very quick run through of some of the key factors that are going to determine the economics of a power project and in particular tying some of them back to some of the concepts we've talked about earlier on. So we know some costs at the start whereas others are going to be future costs. The cost structures of different projects will vary whether they have fuel or not, how much land they need, how much operational cost they have, how much capital cost they have. So we mentioned that we have different power supply options, different power plants we could build. It's important to also realise that the cost structures of those different projects vary according to the type of power plant. And even if the cost structures of two similar types of projects may be the same, a solar, two solar projects or two gas projects, the specific costs in each case will again vary. The capital costs can vary according to your choice of equipment, the amount of land you need, the difficulty in construction, whatever it may be. And then the operational costs of different projects of the same type might vary. For example, gas prices vary in different regions, so your fuel costs may be different. Or your solar panels may need cleaning more often in one region than another, depending on the amount of dust in the atmosphere. There, there can be a whole bunch of variables both on the revenue side of projects economics and also on the cost side. Certainly on the revenue side, fixed prices are going to help with revenue certainty. And that's great for investors because if you have better certainty on your revenue, you know the left hand side, then essentially what you need to do is work out all those various costs and check that they add up to less than you're going to make in revenue. If your revenue is variable, because either your energy output is uncertain, which could be because of the weather, or it could be because in a future market you don't know how often you're going to be called on to dispatch. Or it could be that, yes, you know how much energy you're going to generate, but you're uncertain on the prices because you're dependent on market prices, which will vary according to the types of sources available and the variation in demand in future. So certainly the detail of power project economics is a subject for a whole course in itself. So the idea of this brief tutorial was just to introduce the variables that you need to think about. Okay, thank you.